Hello, Master Gardeners. We're out in the fields again and looking at some plants that you already know. This is our milkweed, and everybody knows that because it's the host species for our monarch butterfly. I'm sure you've already studied that, and you know that this is the only plant, these Asclepius species are the only plants that the monarch butterfly requires for the caterpillars to feed on. So I haven't seen any caterpillars yet, but I'm not really good at searching for them. But we've got a meadow of them here. The uh, common milkweed is already starting to come into bloom. You can see some blossoms occurring on there. How do you identify it? They always have this real strong vein coming down, an entire leaf. The leaves are arranged in a pattern being opposite at all times. That strong vein is very helpful, but I'm going to show you a look-alike in a second that can be very confusing. But we also have some of the milkweed bugs that are already out. Look at the little volunteer here. And he might seem like, well, he's pretty, you know, he's bright red, which indicates don't eat me. And the reason you don't eat him is because this is actually a toxic plant. It's not a plant that you would want in any kind of horse pasture. You wouldn't want it near any livestock of any kind because it has a cardiac arrest effect on any kind of animals or humans. So even in a kid's garden, in a garden, you would want to keep your children away from these particular plants. They have a white exudate that comes out of them, and it's that milky sap. You wouldn't even want that a lot on your hands. I've had some serious enough reactions that my girlfriend actually went to the hospital with some health problems because of milky exudate, so be very careful around that all the time. Usually my, uh, milkweed is usually about four foot when it comes into flower, but these are all blooming it here just a foot and a half because this pasture was mowed. We have another invasive species called Bradford pears, and there's such a problem that they mowed these whole areas to control that, but yet, boom, our milkweed, common milkweeds have been able to come back. So the common look-alike that you're gonna get confused with is this dogbane, which is on this side. Here's one that was coming into bloom. This is another one that gets three or four feet tall. These are all in the Apocanaceae family. I think that's how you pronounce it. It has a little white flower. It's already starting to wilt. I just pulled it out of the ground from another side of the field. But it has the same strong mid vein. But there's one primary difference in this plant. Look at how the branching occurs on the upper one third of the plant. It has that same white milky exudate. The flower's white, whereas our milkweed is usually more of a pinkish cluster. So a little different flower, but the leaves can be very confusing because they're a little bit more long and narrow, but it looks a lot like a milkweed plant. So a confusing look-alike for sure. And this is called dogbane. The genus is a, a I need to look, a pacacinum, whatever it means actually. It's a, a dog killer, you know, because they consume this, it can kill your dogs. It is a plant that is planted in native plant gardens because there's so many pollinators that use this plant. So if you looked up how many different insects there were that feed on it, you would be as surprised as I was when I was researching. The science name for this one is Apocasinum cannabinium. Binum, cannabinum. So related to our milkweed, sisters definitely, because of that white exudate. One of the characteristics of this it's also called Indian hemp, and this wood that's left behind that remains can be peeled off and used to make twines and fabrics. And I don't know if you can zoom in on this, you can kind of see the fibers right here in the stem. So if you wanted to make some homemade paper, I think this would be a pretty nifty plant to collect some of the stems for, for making some paper and fiber. They say they, they can even be used to make fabrics and things like that. Very strong, good quality fiber from the dog dog hemp, dogbane hemp, as compared to Asclepius. So I just want to share that idea with you that you might get them confused when you see them in the field because they choose the same, same habitats. They're both out in the prairies. They both do the, the same approximate height, usually four or five, three to four feet. So it can be confusing. Just wanted to share that with you. Enjoy this hot evening.